Should you use WordPress or Wix? Where should you go to buy a domain name and web hosting? We will be covering these important questions here in lesson two of how to build a business website in a weekend. In this lesson, you'll learn exactly which tools to use to create your business website. We're going to look at the environment. Some people call this a platform. We will also consider web hosting, domain registrars, which theme to use, and we will briefly discuss a business email address and an email marketing service. So let's dive in. Building a website is kind of like building a house. I'll use this analogy to help you understand the role each tool plays when you build your website. So before you start building, you'll need to choose a community type. So I'll give you two choices. You can either build in a gated community with a homeowners association or a non-gated community without a homeowners association. So gated communities in the United States tend to be known as slightly exclusive communities, but with many limitations. If you were to build a brand new house in a gated community, your floor plan choices would probably be very limited. You might not be able to install the, for example, type of roof you want because all of the houses in the community are supposed to have the same kind of roof. You may not even be able to have visitors over for more than 24 hours. And in fact, you may not even be permitted to have certain types of pets. And of course, there would be a homeowners association keeping an eye on everything. There's just a lot of restrictions regarding what you can or can't do. So this is sort of like using a hosted solution such as Squarespace or Wix. Hosted solutions have their own closed ecosystem. And so you're limited to what they have to offer. They do provide web hosting as a part of their package, but let's say you choose Squarespace, then you will have to use a Squarespace theme. You will have to use Squarespace plugins. And so if you ever wanna change web hosts, well, you wouldn't be able to do that without leaving Squarespace completely and rebuilding your entire site. So hosted solutions like Squarespace and Wix feel very limited. In a non-gated community, you have all the freedom you want to build anything you want. You can choose any floor plan you want, you can hire any architect you want, you have, you have all the choice in the world. And so this is how WordPress is. With WordPress, not only are there tons of themes and plugins listed in their theme and plugin libraries, but you can also look at third-party companies that specialize in WordPress themes and plugins. And you can use WordPress tools from sites like Theme Forest, where individual developers list their themes and plugins for sale. What's really nice about WordPress is if you're ever unhappy with your web host, you can take your WordPress site to a different host. So with WordPress, because you can use any theme or plugin, even ones made by third parties and individual developers, and because you can migrate your site if needed, WordPress is known for giving users more freedom. And there's also the point that the sheer number of available WordPress themes and plugins far surpasses what's available for hosted solutions. Chances are pretty good that no matter what you want to do with your site, someone has created a theme or a plugin for it. The exception being that you probably won't be able to create the next big social media platform using WordPress. It's just, it's just not quite built for that. So next up, you'll need a place to put your house. So you'll have to buy land. Similarly, for your website, you'll need a web hosting service. Your web hosting service is going to store all of the services and information needed to create the visual representation of your website. Now there's a million web hosts out there, so how do you choose a good one? The ones we recommend are WPX and SiteGround. SiteGround is great for beginners because they have low prices for your first invoice with them. Just watch out for the renewal prices because the renewal rates are much higher than their initial rates. WPX has higher rates to start off with, but they offer excellent service and they're really good for sites that get a fair amount of traffic. So what you can do is start your site on SiteGround and after a year or so, when you've gotten some traffic and after you've started to make some income, then move your site over to WPX. Next, you'll also need an address for your house. Without an address, people won't know where to go to see your awesome new house. And so similarly, you will need a domain name for your website. 
It's worth noting that many web hosts also allow you to purchase a domain name from them or their web hosting packages come with a free domain name. The upside to this is that the setup process is usually easier. A possible downside to this is, and this used to be a bigger problem than it is today, but some sneaky companies used to try to hold your domain name hostage if you decided to switch web hosts. However, I think companies have largely abandoned that tactic, so I don't think you have to worry about that quite as much today as you maybe used to maybe five or six years ago. I would say that a more concerning downside is that if your hosting and domain registrar are the same company, if your website or account gets hacked, it's possible that you will lose your domain name. If you keep your web hosting separate from your domain registrar, then even if your website gets hacked, you still have control over your domain. Another thing to consider is that some web hosts charge more than a typical domain registrar would. So for example, you can purchase a domain name with SiteGround, but just for the domain name, it's over $25 per year, including privacy. Compare that with Google Domains, which is only $12 a year, including privacy. So it just seems rather pricey. If you choose to purchase a domain name separate from your web host, then you'll need to think about a domain name registrar. You can look at Google Domains, Name Silo, or Gandhi to name a few. I highly suggest purchasing from a company where privacy protection is included in the price, which I believe is the case for all of these recommendations. Privacy protection prevents the domain owner's name and contact information from being public knowledge, and so it prevents spammers from contacting you. Now, things to watch out for when choosing a domain name registrar. Uh, upsells, first of all. Many domain name registrars will prompt you to purchase things that you probably don't need. And also watch out for nickel and diming for services that other registrars include in their prices. Next, you'll need to choose an architect to build your amazing new building. So every famous architect has a signature style. Some architects are more modern, some architects like organic design, some are futuristic. And so that is what your theme will do for your website. It'll influence the overall aesthetic of your website as well as the layout. Now, if you choose to use WordPress over a hosted solution, the good news is that you have a seemingly infinite number of theme choices. The WordPress library has thousands of themes to choose from, and there are several companies that specialize in WordPress themes. And you can also get themes from sites like ThemeForest, where individual developers and companies list their themes for sale. So how do you choose a suitable WordPress theme? Well, it used to be that WordPress themes were fairly restrictive. So whatever fonts, colors, and layouts you saw in the theme example were what you had to live with and all you could change was content. So it may be tempting to look for a WordPress theme based on the styling. And then you figure, well, if I want additional functionality, I'll just look for a plugin that does what I want. Another approach is to look for a theme that has the features you want, but that has customizable fonts and colors. So you might say, I want a header where the logo is centered and I want a homepage that has a section for text as well as a blog post section and a contact form section at the bottom. So then you'll look for a theme that has that exact layout and then you use a plugin to change the fonts and maybe just hope that you can change the custom colors. But now times have progressed and you can actually take complete control over your entire theme. So you can choose your layout, you can choose your colors, you can choose fonts, and you can really create virtually any look you want for your website. And of course, I'm talking about Thrive Theme Builder. Now I am a bit biased, but if you want a theme that can do it all, I think that Thrive Theme Builder is a fantastic choice. So we've talked through a number of choices. Let's quickly go over our tech recommendations. As for which kind of community, we recommend WordPress. WordPress is for those who want to have complete control over their entire website. You can use any page builder you want, any courseware plugin, any lead generation plugin, as long as they are made to work on WordPress websites. And if you want to use any of the tools in Thrive Suite, you will also need to have a WordPress website. Now, I'd also like to mention that there's WordPress.com and WordPress.org. WordPress.com is a web hosting service similar to WPX or SiteGround. 
And WordPress.org is a place to get the WordPress software, which is free. However, there's typically no need to download WordPress from WordPress.org as most web hosts already have WordPress on their servers. For your web host, we recommend WPX or SiteGround depending on your level of expertise. WPX is great for websites that are already receiving traffic or for businesses that are already profitable. SiteGround is great for beginners. And as far as buying a domain name, if you want ultimate flexibility, then you'll probably want to purchase your domain name from a domain registrar separate from your web host. So a domain registrar such as Google Domains. But it does add an extra step when you're getting everything set up, and that extra step is specifying the correct name servers. If you're a complete beginner and you want things to be as simple as possible, then it is perfectly fine to buy your domain from your web host. And I know I mentioned earlier that hacking is a potential concern. So to prevent hacking, be sure to use unique usernames and strong passwords. Keep your website up to date. A security plugin is always a good idea. And try to stick to plugins that are developed by reputable companies. For your theme, we recommend Thrive Theme Builder, which is a part of Thrive Suite. We think you'll enjoy having complete control over every aspect of your website, including the header, the footer, your blog post templates, category pages, and more. It works incredibly well with the rest of the tools in Thrive Suite, as well as tools like WooCommerce if you're thinking about adding e-commerce to your website. Now, what other tools might you need? Well, you'll need a business email address. It's best to set up a business email address using your business domain instead of Gmail or Hotmail. It just looks a lot more professional. And both WPX and SiteGround include a business email address with their hosting plans. And you will also need an email marketing service such as MailChimp or ActiveCampaign for sending out weekly newsletters, sending out emails when you launch a product, etc. Your email marketing service is where your email list will be stored, so sometimes you'll hear marketers talk about building your email list and this is what they're talking about. It's very important that when you send out marketing emails that you email only those who have opted in to receive marketing emails and that you do it from an actual email marketing service. You definitely don't want to use something like Gmail for this. If you're just starting out, you can use something like MailChimp as they have a free plan. However, if you want to do more advanced things with your email list, such as automated emails, ActiveCampaign will probably be better suited to your needs. So those are our tech recommendations. Now, you don't have to use what we've recommended to benefit from the rest of this course, as we're going to keep things fairly general moving forward. And I also wanted to mention that Thrive Suite can be used with any self-hosted WordPress installation. So even if you're using something like Bluehost or Dreamhost or HostGator, you could absolutely use Thrive Suite. Thrive Suite also integrates with several email marketing services besides MailChimp and ActiveCampaign. And let's say you already have a theme for your website, so you don't need Thrive Theme Builder. Don't forget that Thrive Suite includes Thrive Leads, our lead generation tool, which I'll be demonstrating later on in this course. And it also includes Thrive Architect, which is our page builder and several other tools. All right, so that is it for the tech. Let's move on to the next lesson. Okay.